Joe Boy with WJHM 102GNs.com, and we're recording Confessions with Brian Chikatia on a new software with Wirecut. In five, four, three. Peace, everybody. Confessions. Peace, everybody. Confessions. Peace, everybody. Confessions. You are listening to Confessions with Brian T. Bethea on 102 Jam. What's going on, family? Once again, this is another episode of Confessions with Brian T. Bethia on WJHM102Jams.com. Family, hopefully you've been enjoying the show for the past couple of weeks. And listen, we got another dope one for you. Once again, um, we got another dope one for you. We got another author coming on uh, coming on the line by the name of Miss Dorcas Pittman. She's going to talk about her new book and, and all the things that she went through to write this new book. It's going to be exciting. We'll be right back with Confessions with Brian T. Bethea on WJHM 102Jams.com with Confessions with Brian T. Bethea, y'all. Peace. Our mission at PMP Cleaning Services is simple, to provide high quality service in a a timely manner. Our team caters to each project's specific needs to ensure excellence. We specialize in commercial cleaning, COVID fumigation, janitorial cleaning services, move in out of business cleaning, medical office space cleaning, and so much more. For more information and rates, give us a call at 321-356-0203 for all your cleaning needs. All you dolls out there, this is me, Sizzle. 2019 flew by and my friend still did not have the body she wanted. Then I discovered a solution. The Cosmetic Surgery Place. Yes, Cosmetic Surgery. Don't spend another minute miserable. Call 407-636-5000. She did. Now my friend is all of that and then some. Be one of the next seven callers to receive your breast surgery. Free with a tummy tuck. Yes, free. Call now at 407-636-5000. This is Aretha Simons. When I'm driving, I'm listening to Confessions with Brian T. Bethier on 102 Jams. Are you frustrated with your computer? Tired of waiting for the computer to let you get your work done? Having an IT professional available when you need him can be invaluable to your business. With a Your Computer Solutions monthly service plan, you can enjoy error-free computing and get your tasks done when you want them done. Got a virus or malware warning? Call YCS and let them remotely solve the issue for you. Computer running slow? Give YCS a call and they will remotely fix it. When? Well, right away. On average, our clients are back up and running within 10 minutes minutes of their call. If you want your computer to run smoothly month after month, just get the Your Computer Solutions monthly service plan. Your Computer Solutions is there when you need them. Call us today at 407-826-0810. I repeat, 407-826-0810. Emergency repair when you need it. Call us, 407-826-0810. All right, family, once again, welcome back to another episode of Confessions with Brian T. Bethia. Hopefully you've enjoyed my past few episodes that I've had with special guests coming on, uh, particularly my relationship series. And uh, this young lady who is an author, uh, I may plan to have on my relationship series that I got going on right now. Uh, But she has written a book um, in regards for, and it's called Breaking the Silence, Christianity and Mental Illness. Uh, So... My guest today is um, none other than Mrs. Dorcas Pittman. How are you, sister? I'm good, and you? Doing wonderful, doing wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you for asking. And uh, so we, I thought this was a really dope uh, book, and of course, doing my research on you as well. Um, <laughs> this is a almost like a first of its kind in terms of the type of um, book that I'm hearing about, and as well as the guest that I'm having on. So let's start off right off with the, with the book. Why did you decide to write it? Um, I decided to write the book basically because I wanted people to understand that they're not in the fight alone. Um, Mental illness is really not addressed in the black community and also in the Christian community. And so, you know, God gave me this assignment and, you know, I had to I had to do it. I had to use my story to just reach his people. And um, people have been suffering in silence for years. 
um, mental illness, depression, anxiety. And it's like, no one talks about it. And it was time to have the conversation. So um, I use my, my life, my healing journey, the process, um, and I put it all on paper. It's basically my testimony. Now, and of course, we do understand um, based on, of course, our conversation and, of course, uh, me reading what the book was about or what have you, uh, you are a, um, um, is it a sexual abuse survivor, is that correct? Um, I was molested as a child and I was um, sexually abused in college. Okay. Now, um, of course... I, I wanted to, uh, I know we it, we rarely even talk about that, especially when it comes to the, uh, well, I mean, we talk about it as a society, but when it comes to the church in general, it doesn't seem like, like you said, it's not really particularly brought up um, mm -hmm. in regard. So in those, in those times when you were going through the storms or what have you, did you ever feel like you were alone and that you could not come to anybody, you know, with, with this problem that you couldn't talk to anybody? Well, yes. Um, it, a lot of it stemmed, like I said, from childhood. And we were taught to just, okay, you just keep your business to yourself. And, you know, in the book I talk about, I felt damaged. And so I was already feeling alone and I didn't want to bring any more negative attention towards me um, because I felt like I was damaged goods. And I knew that as a Christian, um, being brought up, well, you do not worry about stuff. And I just didn't know how to talk about it. Um, I was raised by my grandparents. My mom left um, when I was two, and I just didn't know how to talk about it. I didn't know what to do. And so I just continued to keep it in and just move out, move on with life because I just didn't want any other negative attention or um, to seem like I was even more damaged than I thought I was. Got you. Now, um, has, has, this, has this been the first book that you've written, or have you written anything else prior? This is the first book. This is the freshman book, but he has given me more um, to write. And um, the conversation is going to continue because, like I said, he's ready for his children to heal. They've been we've been suffering in silence and in, in drowning in the, the trauma of our childhood and adult life. And it's time for us to have those conversations that we, you know, we haven't talked about. Now, in regards to you talking about the healing process, would you how long if you have it all? Um, and if you haven't, I, I do understand. But how long would you say that it took you to, to heal from those times of abuse? <laughs> um, honestly, you know, just a little backstory. This started like way early in childhood. And so these, um, the molestation just added on to the trauma of, everything else that I had dealt with in regards to my mom leaving and feeling like I was abandoned and felt like, you know, I was in this fight alone. And so you add the molestation to it, then that was just another layer of trauma. And then when I got to college, I was sexually assaulted. That was another layer of tra layer of trauma that I didn't deal with. And so, you know, I just turned 35. It wasn't until 2019 um, when I was 33 years old, I, you know, had was a mom of two start dealing with depression and anxiety and when I you know going to my therapist I realized that I had layers and layers of trauma that I had to heal from and the um molestation and the sexual assault was just a part of one of those layers of this you know onion of trauma that I had gone through wow and so since to the summer of 2019 um after I checked myself actually into the hospital because I just knew something wasn't right. You know, I was having suicidal thoughts. I mean, everything that they say a Christian is not supposed to, you know, have or do, that's where I was. And I checked myself into the hospital because I knew something wasn't right. And that is where God really, I had a chance to really connect with him because I didn't have any other distractions. I was in the mental ward. And it was from that point that the healing process started and no, it hasn't been easy. And yes, I'm still healing, but however, you know, the journey, how far I've come so far, you know, I wanted to share that with other people so they can start the healing process because healing is a um, ongoing journey. Mm -hmm. You're just, a, you're just peeling back the layers each time you heal from something. Okay. You can move on. God is equipping you so that you can continue the healing process and unpack those things that we don't even know that are affecting us. Uh, um, good answer. I appreciate that. Now, in, in regards for that, um, let me and, and 
uh, forgive me if this is getting um, too in your business, but the reason why I asked this question is because um, I've heard of stories, and I know a married couple that does counseling, uh, mm -hmm. where the wife had, had dealt with this particular issue, um, uh, being sexually abused growing up or what have you. Um, so, you know, when you when you and your husband first got married, you know, and, and you know, having those, you know, those intimate moments, was there some, uh, like, pushback or some, I don't want to say insecurity, but, like, un uncertainty and, like, you know, about when it's time to, you know, to make love or, you know, those those romantic moments. Was there an issue with that? It was an issue with that. Um, however, looking back now, I realized that I wasn't healed. So there were, you know, there were apprehensions. And I realized now that I wasn't free with him. And our relationship now intimately is like a complete 180 because it's a lot of mental. And when you've gone through, you know, sexual assault, molestation, you don't realize how it affects you mentally. And, you know, he didn't know all this stuff when we got married. And so it came out in our, you know, throughout the years of our marriage. And he's been along this journey with me. Now that I've addressed some of the trauma, I am free to be free with him. Got you, got you. And, and um, it, um... I, I can't remember the, the pastor's last name, uh, but I have his book and it just made me think, you know, how many people are dealing with uh, issues of molestation or sexual assault. And then, you know, because, you know, I'm sure for some people, you know, they, they may come to that, uh, you know, when their spouse wants to get some or what have you. And then it's kind of hard because, you know, if they're coming on to them, then it kind of brings up the trauma, you know, that you kind of went through or what have you. Um, you know, and how long would you say that you felt like comfortable when you got to that point with your husband? Um, I was pretty much always, you know, I was comfortable with being intimate with my husband. That wasn't a problem. But, you know, I was I didn't know that it was affecting me that I would say that I didn't know it was affecting me until I started to address it. And, you know, we went from him having to you know warm the engine up so now it's like okay let's get in the car and go <laughs> and so a lot of couples don't you know you know realize and a lot of husbands don't know how to deal with it and so that's why it is is key. that's why this book is um so important because you know breaking your silence and addressing those traumas and addressing those the things that have caused you pain that you're still holding on to right um that's why it's so important because you don't realize how much it is impacting you. No, until you start to break your silence, walk in your truth and deal with those things. And it takes a lot of courage. And so, like I said, my husband and our relationship now, and he even said, you know, a lot of arguments and a lot of things that we went through, it wasn't, a, it wasn't about him. It was literally linked to the trauma of my past. It was just that things that he were he was doing was triggering the trauma, the thoughts of that trauma, and so I was taking it out on him, which caused relate. I mean, problems in our marriage. Mm. And so, I mean, literally, it was earlier this year we had a conversation. He was like, "I understand now. A lot of that wasn't about me. It was about it, I was triggering things from your past." Right. And because it I couldn't take it out on the people who caused the pain I was taking that on him you, you know and you, you bring up a good point and I'm glad you explained it that way because I know um and he, he seems to be a very good guy and I'm very I'm glad that he had um <laughs> I, I'm glad the way that, he, that you explained it that he had the patience to want to get it through that with you and the reason why that that's so important is because with men a lot of us a lot of times don't have the patience uh, to get through or to, um, to keep steady with with something like that when we have a woman that's been through some type of trauma like that. You know what I'm saying? So I really, uh, I'm glad that you stressed that so that a man that, so that a husband or a man or what have you that is in a relationship with, with someone um, that has gone through that, they can know, you know, they know how to be patient and just, and, and be more understanding, you know what I'm saying? And listen and not just listen to, you know, respond, but of course, listen to understand and then, you know, help solve the um, the problem. Um, how long did it take you to write the book? 
I started um, in the, I want to say June 2019. And like I said, I was writing it up, and, uh, you know, it was funny. It was supposed to be um, released in the end of December, but God was like, no, I'm not finished with it yet. And I'm like, okay, dude, what else I need to add to this book? And he had more. <laughs> He had more than he was having me to add. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to be obedient. And so literally I was writing, writing it up until like November, December of last year. And I just was, I was just obedient because some of the things that I didn't want to put, he made me put. And some stuff that I wanted to put, he told me no. And that's why I had to be really intentional um, with my relationship with God, because I didn't want to put anything that was outside of him. Because even though it's my testimony and my story, I want people to hear God's voice when they read the book because it's about him. It's Christianity and mental illness. And people think mental illness is okay. You're, you know, bipolar, schizophrenic, but anxiety and depression is more common than anything else. And I told people, you know, they want to say, well, why did they commit suicide? You know, they had all of these things to live for. And I was one of those people. And I would tell you, after a while, if it's unaddressed, your kids, your spouse, your your relationship with God, none of that will matter in that moment of darkness when you feel like you've been abandoned by God, you don't have any faith or hope, and you just want to end it all. So that's why this book is so important to especially the Christian community, because so many Christians, pastors, I mean, so many people in the Christian community are they're suffering with mental illness, whether it, you know, the cause of it was sexual trauma, sexual abuse um daddy issues mama issues all those things are built it build up and you, it starts to affect you with the depression and the anxiety yeah and I'm, I'm i'm glad that we're all talking about it now and this, uh, hopefully this won't be like a trend uh and just before um, we go to commercial break because we're about to go to commercial break um uh, i hope this doesn't just become a trend i know um you know mental health in the black community like you said is not really talked about and uh, I'm glad that, you know, it's become cool to talk about it now because we're dealing with um, with a lot of trauma here in our community. But listen, we'll be right back with Confessions with Brian T. Bethia on WJHM 102Jams.com. After these messages, got to go pay some bills. Peace. Over 40 years, Lighthouse Central Florida has provided education, independent life skills, and job training to thousands of Central Floridians who live with blindness or any degree of Peace, family. Again, this is Brian with Confessions with Brian T. But there, don't want y'all to forget, also, I host a weekly open mic called Writer's Block. Who's next? Every Saturday, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, every Saturday at TNT Cafe. That's T-E-A-A-N-D-T-E-A Cafe. Address 127 West Fairbanks Avenue in Winter Park. So, again, Writer's Block at TNT Cafe, 127 West Fairbanks Avenue in Winter Park. Peace, y'all. The Tiberia Show would like to thank one of their dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff, ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom braille ADA signs, vinyl lettering to trophies and awards. The cool part about Custom Designs is they can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407-898-0373 and tell them that Tiberius sent you. C.JamieSmithLaw.com You can call them at 407-801-2667. Wait, you are not Chuck. My dad can help when people get hurt. He loves to help people. If you are ever injured at work or in a car accident, you should call my friend Chuck. You can call them at 407-801-2667. That website again is cwsmithwall.com. Offices, Orlando. Does it actually have that much W's? <laughs> 
T&S Beauty Supply is a black-owned beauty supply store located minutes from Orlando in Apopka, Florida. T&S Beauty Supply is not only your local hair store supplying weaves, wigs, bundles, and more, but we also offer all types of beauty supply products and accessories such as barber equipment, cosmetics, jewelry, and so much more. We offer competitive prices and quality service. Stop by or call us at 407-814-3412. Aw, Dad, my computer's slow again and I can't play my games. Call your computer solutions today and we will scan for viruses and clean that computer up remotely and make it fast again. Our phone number is 407-826-0810. Thanks, Dad. My computer's fast again. Now I can do my homework. Thanks for calling your computer solutions at 407-826-0810. All right, and we're back again with another, with uh, Confessions with Brian T. Bethia on WJHM, 102jams.com. Of course, we're back with our special guest, Mrs. Dorcas Pittman. And uh, so I know we were talking about... Um, just before I was mentioning that it's become cool now to talk about mental health in the black community, of course. And, uh, of course, uh, a lot of that has to do with, um, with, uh, Charlemagne from the breakfast club. I think he, he goes over it quite, um, often and, mm-hmm. uh, and much respect to that brother for, uh, for, for doing that. Um, cause you know, back, back in the day, well, let me ask you this back in the day, did people ever call you crazy? You know, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's funny that you would say that because, um, when my family read the book, you know, my cousin made the comment, well, we just thought she was crazy. We just call her crazy. And, you know, it surprised some other people in my family, but family, but yeah, they used to call me crazy because there was so much that I was dealing with and I didn't know who to talk to about it. Because like I said, growing up in, you know, a black home, you don't talk about stuff. You just sweep it under the rug and you keep it moving. And, you know, they used to call me crazy. Yeah. I, you know, the reason why I say that is, um, and I hope you didn't take no disrespect for that, oh, but no, it's, no, it's no. literally it's what we stigma. say in our community. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't rock with him or her. Yo, they crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And, uh, yes. and and particularly in our community, we think ginger ale and Vicks is the cure for everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally. Like, we think ginger ale and Vicks is the cure for everything. Oh, um. Hey, hey, baby, go go drink a glass of ginger ale and go lay down. Mm-hmm. We think ginger ale, Vicks, and laying down is a cure for everything. You yes, know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's not. Um, and a lot of times, and things that I've seen personally with people who've gone through trauma, they see um, you. Pro- a lot of times you go to like Big Mama. You know what I'm saying? You go to your grandmother, you know, you, your uncle or an aunt, a cousin or somebody that you know have already been through it, you know, to go get that advice, you know what I'm saying, like for free. Um, so... Uh, did, were you able to, um, now I, I know you mentioned you had gone to the hospital. Did, did, you, did you have like a regular therapist that you go to like weekly or every month or, or what have you? Not, or co- not before, not before I went to the hospital. It, you know, now I, I mean, my therapist, she, you know, she was the one who helped me to unpack a lot of things because my mental illness was affecting my cause Christian, um, my Christian illness. And so it wasn't until I was able to address the mental illness that I was able to rebuild my relationship with God. And so, you know, my therapist, she was able to open, you know, doors. Like I didn't think I had daddy issues. And it wasn't until I went to my therapist and I realized I had daddy issues. And so, you know, my therapist has played a tremendous role in my healing process. And so, I mean, I I encourage anyone to just, I mean, therapy is okay. You know, you don't have to keep your business in the house. You know, they're, they're licensed therapists. You know, I understand going to a Christian counselor. However, you can go to a Christian counselor, but a, a licensed um, medical therapist, they are a, they are trying to um, address and handle things that a Christian counselor, you know, they're not. Because they're only seeing it from the Christian perspective and not from the medical perspective. And let me also add, family, if you can find a Christian licensed specialist therapist, even better. You get the best of you yes, know, yes, both worlds, yes. God and, 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 and the so-called yes. secular world. You know what yes. I'm saying? But I, I, I like to explain it like that because you do need a, um, a Christian specialist that will um, 
that will explain things in a godly but worldly way so that you can understand. Because I know the reason why I say this is because we always say, oh, baby, just pray about it. everything and bring it all right. God, God, will be all right. Nah, you, you got to go ahead and do the work to get through it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Now, don't get me wrong. God Still does, pray. you know, <laughs> Jesus does take some things, you know, I don't want to say sins, but some problems away automatically. And, and there are people out there that do like, you know what? I'm going to get, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I get through this. But, you know, for others, you know, I believe in spiritual gifts and somebody mm-hmm. out there has a spiritual gift of counseling, you know what I'm saying, that God gave them in order to get people, um, you know, help people get to where they are. Uh, let me, let me ask you this. Um, since you and I are, are, are both Christians, of course, mm-hmm. um, how were you able to keep your relationship with God and not leave him? you know, going through, after going through what you went through. And I, I think that's important because mm-hmm. when people go through things that you went through, people think God has forgotten about them or God forsake them or what have you, or, you know, they get mad at God for allowing them to go through that. How did you stay strong with your relationship with God? To be honest, um, when I started going through all of this, I literally thought I had lost my relationship with God because I was close to cursing him. Um, mainly because I had gone through so much in my life and I was like, God, why am I still going through? Why are you allowing me to continue to go through things? And, um, but you know, the thing about it is once I addressed the mental illness, it gave me clarity in the spiritual realm. Like I said, when I was in the hospital, it gave me, because I had a previous relationship with God and he positioned it so that I can address the mental illness. So when I was in that hospital with, without a phone, or any distractions, I was able to rebuild that relationship with him. So the relationship I had before is a lot better um, now after I've gone through this journey of healing. And so it's it's still good to have that foundation because, you know, that foundation is what's key. Even though the, you know, the storms may come, the wind may blow, you know, the windows may get, you know, knocked out from hell or whatever. If it's built on a strong foundation, you can rebuild from there. And so that's the thing about it is if you already have a great foundation and you know the word of God and you've had a relationship with him and, you know, all of a sudden because you're dealing with depression and anxiety and you feel like God has forsaken you, when you're able to address those traumas and address the mental illness, it gives you that clarity. Okay, now I see why I was dealing with all of this. And also I realized that this was bigger than me. Once I was able to, you know, free my mind of all the mess that I had packed in there, God was able to speak to me and I was able to hear him. And so it's vital to have that foundation from the beginning. And, you know, a lot of people when they're going through, if they weren't Christians, they become Christians because, you know, God allows us, everyone has a certain path. And so where some people may not have been Christians in the midst of them going through, they became closer to God. Well, me, I was, I was, you know, raised in the church. I always knew about God. However, I wasn't taught the relationship apart about him until I was, uh, you know, older. And so because I had the relationship prior to, you know, I was able to, you know, restore that to a better place after I went through, you know, addressing the mental illness and, you know, dealing with the traumas of my past, I was able to, um, build a better relationship with God because I know that he allowed me to go through those, through those things for this specific reason of me being a vessel so that other people can heal. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Again, I appreciate you explaining it that way. Cause I know sometimes, like I said, some, sometimes people have a, um, you know, they go through the trauma and they, they just forget all about them. Um, you know, or, say, or, or they, or they've been, you know, violated in some way, whether they've been punched in the face or what have you. And it's like, you know, and they become like the person that they did not want to, the person, they become the person they did not like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't like I myself. Like. You didn't? I didn't like myself. That's why I wanted to end it all. I didn't, when I looked in the mirror, I didn't like who I saw and everything around me was crumbling. I was dealing with depression. I was dealing with anxiety. My husband and I were having issues. We were having financial problems. I was a mom of two. I was being overworked. I looked in the mirror and I didn't see Dorcas anymore. I I was the shell of somebody that was just existing. I wasn't living. 
And because I knew that this is not me, something has to be wrong. Like something's wrong. Like God, something has to be wrong because this is not me. This is not the person that you, you know, you created. This is what is going on. And so that's the thing. What you breaking your silence and talking about it. When you talk about things, it's freeing. It allow it gives you that space to deal with it. So if you continue to keep it balled up, I say it's imploding. When you continue to put pressure in something, it's only going to be able to withstand so much. Right. And so that's where a lot of people break. But I, you know, I talk about in the um the in my book, this is spirit. This was a spiritual warfare for me. You know, not to go into any details, but Satan had a bounty on my head. And because I was able to change my perspective, it's like, okay, the reason why he's coming at me because I have a greater calling and either I can give in to this, this illness or fight for my life. And I decided to fight for my life. And so you have to, I mean, you, either you're going to fight or fight. And so some people, they end it all. And that's the thing about it is, you know, that's, I, you know, I honestly believe that God is tired of his children children ending it and taking their own lives because they feel alone and feel like they're in this world alone and they don't understand who they are anymore yeah and, and um you know I, I i have friends that have uh dealt with depression and uh you know yeah it, it, it is really a dark place for real for them you know what i'm saying and I feel like sometimes I have to go and talk them off the ledge or what have you. You do. Um, but you know what? It's, it, and I've always had that, 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 I've always had that mantra for me personally. You know, everyone was created on purpose, by purpose, for his purpose. You know what I'm saying? So I don't believe, yeah, yeah I don't believe anybody is born without a purpose. You know what I'm saying? A, a divine purpose. I think mm -hmm. every single one of us on earth has a divine purpose you know in somebody else's life you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. especially if our own let me let me uh let me go back real real quick um now and you say that you were a, a daddy's girl and that um you know and, and, and whatnot uh can you go into uh, give us a little bit of at least why um why your parents left and how that affect how yeah. much did that really affect you well my i was the only child my parents had together and so um, my dad still lived where I lived. My mom left when I was two to go to Detroit. I'm from the the backwoods of Alabama, Wilcox County, like the country of the country. And so there, was, there wasn't anything down there. So my mom left. She went to Detroit at two and she left me with her parents. Well, my dad, he never lived more than 20 minutes away. So all I knew was he was there. And when you're a child, you're surrounded by everyone else who has their mom, your friends have, you know, they have their moms, your cousins have their moms. And you're that child that doesn't, she's nowhere to, you know, she's not there. Even though you talk to her, she's not physically there. So you feel like you're going through a lot of stuff by yourself. So with my dad, he was there. And that's all that mattered to me. And so I was able to, he wasn't, he wasn't the best role model, but I was able to, push that to, to the side because my issues with my mom were so much greater. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't because I had this, this vision of him. My daddy was there. I'm his firstborn. I'll always be his girl. You know, I'm his baby girl. I didn't realize that. Okay. I had issues in, in regards to my daddy didn't teach me, you know, how a man should treat me. My daddy, you know, he just had, he had a whole bunch of kids. Um, he wasn't a great provider. Like, I didn't realize that it wasn't until I started going through therapy and I was like, hold on, this is not all on my mama. Like, it, it and like I said, back to in relationships, all of that affects your relationships because you're chasing that love. And even though my dad gave, he gave me love, it, it was the, my mother's love that I really, really desired that affected me the most. And that's why I say, you know, I just pushed his stuff to the side because I was like, he's here. He's coming to everything. He's showing up, even though he doesn't, you know, contribute financially, he's here. And so that's why I wasn't able to see it earlier. Got you. Okay. Okay. Um, and thank you for clarifying that uh, for me. Now, um, have you, have you and your mother maintained a relationship or just not, not at all? You know what, you know, God is, 
you know, our relationship has been rocky. It'll have its great parts. It'll it'll have its downfalls. I mean, but now our relationship is in a good place because I realized that my mom, she was doing what she was taught. And a lot of it goes back to generational curses. And when you're breaking that silence, when you're discussing these things, a lot of stuff I discussed in the book, like even molestation, that's a sexual, that's like generational curses. All right. those things are generational curses and they, don't, they affect your relationships in the future. And so um, I said, I'm breaking this stuff. And now that my mom understands, she's read the book. I kept her, um, I kept her in the loop along the way. So she knew what I was writing because I respect her that much. I didn't want her to be blindsided. Mm -hmm. And I think because of the book and because I was able to speak my truth, we respect each other a lot more. She un she respects me as an adult and she understands me as her daughter. Cool. Now, now, now you and I have, have, have talked about God and spirituality. Let me ask you this. Um, have you forgiven those who have molested you? Yes, that is so key. And the reason I'm saying how I know I forgave them because it's no longer a trigger. If things continue, if the, if something that you've uh, um, experienced or a trauma, if it can, if it continues to be a trigger, then you haven't dealt with it. You haven't forgiven that person. And so today, I can wholeheartedly say that I have forgiven every person who has caused me trauma. Wow. And I have told the you know the person who sexually assaulted me in, in college, you know, I forgave him spiritually because I haven't seen him talk to him or anything, but any, the other people, I, I said it to them. I forgive you. I wow. wholeheartedly forgive you because that, that was the only way that I could heal. Your healing cannot take place until you forgive. And not only did I forgive them, I had to forgive myself. I had to look myself in the mirror and say, you know what? I forgive you. I let, forgive you. Let me let me ask you this. This is kind of a two part question. Mm -hmm. um, um, first of all, why did you feel you had to forgive yourself? That's number one. Secondly, can you do me a favor and just talk to somebody right now who's going through it but refuses to forgive, you know, their 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 um, a coaster or what have you. Um, what would you, what would you say to that person that you were like, you know, go ahead and forgive their molester, or and um, and, and of course, um, you know, why you feel like you had to forgive yourself? You know, I had to forgive myself because there were a lot of things that I did. You know, I blame myself for um, the molestation. I blame myself for the the rape. I blame myself for so many things because I feel like I allowed it to happen when I was operating in trauma. And when you're operating in trauma, you're like, okay, you're just surviving. And I was surviving for so many years, but I had to forgive myself for blaming myself. And it was because I was blaming myself. I was causing self-harm. I was causing physical harm. Right, okay. And so that's why I had to forgive myself. And honestly, forgiving myself was harder than forgiving them my um my offenders got you got you listen that, that, sec that, that second part of that i want you to um I i'll let you answer that we're about to go to commercial mm -hmm. break let me let, let you answer that part um after commercial break okay um, all, right. all right so again family stay tuned with more with uh dorcas Pittman. you're listening to con you're listening to confessions with brian t bethia on wjhm 102jams.com we'll be right back don't go nowhere we'll be right back after these messages fam peace When I'm driving, I'm listening to Confessions with Brian T. Bedeer on 102 Jams. Homeowners, realtors, property managers, and real estate investors, if you're looking to make that house a home, from kitchen bath flooring, popcorn removal, drywall, and painting, True Pine Maintenance is your go-to company. Licensed and insured, they do commercial and residential. Upgrade your home or business today. With 25 years experience in the business, they can surely meet your needs. Give them a call at 407-723-3826. That's True Pine Maintenance, L-I-C. 
Ridge Gun Range is a family-oriented shooting range that has been in business for over 30 years. They specialize in basic firearm training and offer numerous services such as consignments, gun trades, gunsmithing, and concealed weapon classes. I even got my training for gun safety at Oak Ridge Gun Range. Great customer service and firearm safety is what they do best. So find out more at OakRidgeGunRange.com. Aw, Dad, my computer's slow again and I can't play my games. Call your computer solutions today and we will scan for viruses and clean that computer up remotely and make it fast again. Our phone number is 407-826-0810. Thanks, Dad. My computer's fast again. Now I can do my homework. Thanks for calling your computer solutions at 407-826-0810. The Tribeer Show would like to thank Boggy Creek Native Boat Adventures for being one of our sponsors. I got to go on an air belt and saw a real gator. I even got to go to the gem mine and mine for some gems. We ate a steak dinner at the restaurant and even got some gator rights. If you want to have a blast with the entire family, I suggest you go to www.bcairboats.com right now and get your tickets today. The website again is bcairboats.com. Mid-State Fire has been providing top quality fire equipment services for three generations to the Central Florida area. Don't wait for an emergency to repair. Call Mid-State Fire today at 407-246-8855. Get your fire extinguishers and emergency lighting for both your home and businesses by visiting www.midstatefire.com. That number again is 407-246-8855. The Type View Show would like to thank one of our dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff, ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom Braille ADA signs, vinyl littering, to trophies and awards. They can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407-898-0373. All right, family, and again, we're back with Confessions with Brian T. Bethia on WJHM102Jams.com. And, of course, we are online with our special guest, Mrs. Dorcas Pittman. And, uh, of course, we're back from break. And go ahead, Mama, let, um, speak to that somebody right now that is, um, you know, about forgiveness and how they can forgive their uh, molesters and people that hurt them. Um, one thing I would say, your unforgiveness is not harming your offender it is harming you the longer you unforgive uh, the longer you go without forgiving the longer you live in a hindrance Um, God has so much more in store for you he wants to release your destiny to you but because you have unforgiven you haven't forgiven those who have offended you he cannot release it to you and so it is so key um, for you to forgive because you're causing harm to yourself unforgiveness is self-harm and if you want to live in your purpose and in your destiny and you know not just exist but live in the abundance of God you have to forgive yes it is going to be hard but we serve a God who has all power who is stronger than anything and you just have to realize that God wants more for you than you will ever want for yourself and you just have to forgive like never before absolutely you heard a family uh absolutely that is most important uh to do you know what i'm saying and uh you know what that that brings me uh brings t- to my mind a, a story that um oh i heard oprah say on her show one time and I think she was on there with Ayala uh, Van Zant because you know Ayala <laughs> used to be a, a continuous guest on her show, and it was somebody that um, offended her one um, one day that she happened to have seen on Michigan Avenue, and she had stayed mad at this person for the longest time, uh, but she saw this person on Michigan Avenue just smiling, minding their own business, not a care in the world. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's why I think it's important for you to bring up forgiveness because, you know, sometimes, you know, people will uh, offend you. And may, first of all, they may not even know it. 
You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? They may not even know that you offend uh, that they offended you. That's number one. Uh, and then uh, number two, they've gone on with their life. You know what I'm saying? Even if they offended you intentionally and changed their life around, you know what I'm saying, became a better person, but you're still holding on to that. Uh, I like to call it um, a, a, a spiritual hoarder. You know what I'm saying? You're, ho- mm-hmm. you're, you're hoarding your know, bad spirits or what have you, and you know what I'm saying? you're keeping yourself trapped and, and won't sweep out your house. You know what I'm saying? Your house is getting <laughs> cluttered. They're getting, you know, um, cluttered and, and, and what's the word I'm looking for? Cloudy or what have you. You got to okay. you gotta sweep that dirt on out the house. You know what I'm saying? So um, you mentioned something I saw on your website where it says, like, um, you spent your life giving to people. Now... That's a powerful uh, statement. Or giving your all to people. That's what it was. You spent your life giving your all to people. Was there ever a point when you feel like someone was taking too much out of your life? It wasn't. No. I don't, you know, I don't think so. I I was giving so much to people because I thought I had to. I thought I had to because my I based my worth on what I did for people. Um you know, the, you know, you can't give from an empty cup. And I was giving everything that I thought I had to give for people to see me, not realizing that I was just emptying my cup. And it was at that point when I had nothing left to give that the anxiety and the depression took over because I had nothing left. And mm-hmm. so even though they didn't ask, ask for it, I thought I had to give it to them because my self-worth was just was affected when my mom left it too, because I felt as if I wasn't, I, I wasn't worthy enough for her to stay or come back and get me. And so I felt as if I had to prove to everyone else that I was worthy. So I, I gave all of me to everybody else as a way of proving my worth. Mm. So would you say that uh, acts of kindness or gifts would be like your your love language? Um, yes, <laughs> that is one of my love languages, and I would say there's nothing wrong with giving to people because I'm 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 a giver. I love you know, I love giving, but now I understand that it's okay to give as long as you're being refilled. Right. And that's the thing about it. So I I'm a giver. Um, uh, I just know how to give now. I know how to give, you know, according to God, you have to, you have to replenish. It's like, you know, you go out and sweat and play ball. You're giving, you know, everything you have to replenish, you know? So that's the thing about it. I know how to give now. And that's key. You have to know how to give. Right. And, and, uh, you know what, uh, speaking of, of uh, real quick, if you don't mind me saying, is it okay mm-hmm. if you shout out the name of your therapist? Santiago and she is amazing. She actually did a review on my book. It is actually on my website and it's um it's on the back of my book and she, you know, she, I didn't I never asked her, you know, her faith. I didn't we didn't I, she respected my faith. She never said, you know, we're not going to talk about faith. We're not going to bring up faith. She respected my faith. She gave me a a safe place. And that's how, that's one thing I pray for us to God, send me to the right people. I don't know, you know, I've never been to a therapist. I've never been to a psychiatrist. Lord, send me to where you want me to go. And neither did my psychiatrist or my therapist bring up my faith or try to um, get me to stop talking about my faith. They respected my faith and gave me a safe place to express my faith. Okay. And 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 forgive me for um asking that but i felt god was telling me oh shout out the name of her therapist you know what oh, I'm saying? She, let me tell you something that's my home girl like that is my girl and she will always i told her i said well, wherever you move i will be zoom calling i don't care <laughs> because we we've built that relationship and you know when you built that relationship with somebody they see your growth right. you know my therapist told me she was like statistically you s- supposed to either be on um strung out on drugs or dead by suicide and she was surprised that i was actual functioning adult wow 
And that's and I was like, statistically, by man's standards, I supposed to either be on drugs or dead. But by God's standards, I was right where he needed me to be. Amen. Amen. Amen on mm-hmm. that. Amen on that. So, and, um, you know, again, thank you for uh, shouting her out and, and what have you. Um, but listen, what we're going to do right now, family, um, we're going to go to break. Listen, don't forget to download the WJHM102Jams.com app on your Android or Apple device, family. Download it right now, exactly how I spelled it. We'll be right back with Confessions with Brian T. Bathia on WJHM102Jams.com. After these messages, go pay some bills, y'all. All right, we'll be back. Peace. Call your computer solutions today and we will scan for viruses and clean that computer up remotely and make it fast again. Our phone number is 407-826-0810. Thanks, Dad. My computer is fast again. Now I can do my homework. Thanks for calling your computer solutions at 407-826-0810. Hi, my name is Tiberius Boy. I work with Your Computer Solutions. If your computer is not working, my dad can fix it. He can fix it on-site or remotely. Just call him at 407-826-0810 and tell him Tiberius sent you. That's me. That phone number again is 407-826-0810. Hey guys, this is TC1, and when I stay in Orlando, I like to stay at the Quality Suites over on International Drive. They are amazing properties, simple rooms in an all-suite hotel with outdoor pool, a restaurant, plus free Wi-Fi and a shuttle. Guys, give them a call at 407-363-0332. They're located at 7400 Canada Ave, Orlando, Florida, 32819. Peace, family. Again, this is Brian with Confessions with Brian T. But there, don't want y'all to forget, also, I host a weekly open mic called Writer's Block. Who's next? Every Saturday, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, every Saturday at TNT Cafe. That's T-E-A-A-N-D-T-E-A Cafe. Address 127 West Fairbanks Avenue in Winter Park. So, again, Writer's Block at TNT Cafe, 127 West Fairbanks Avenue in Winter Park. Peace, y'all. All you dolls out there, this is me, Sizzle. 2019 flew by and my friend still did not have the body she wanted. Then I discovered a solution. The Cosmetic Surgery Place. Yes, Cosmetic Surgery. Don't spend another minute miserable. Call 407-636-5000. She did. Now my friend is all of that and then some. Be one of the next seven callers to receive your breast surgery. Free with a tummy tuck. Yes, free. Call now at 407-636-5000. This is Aretha Simons. When I'm driving, I'm listening to Confessions with Brian T. Bedeer on 102 Jams. All right, family, and we're back to close out the show with Confessions with Brian T. Bethia on WJHM102Jams.com. Of course, we want to thank our special guest, Mrs. Dorcas Pittman, uh, for being on our show. And if you could do me a favor real quick, Mama, and go ahead and shout out your social media, where can um, your website, and where people can buy the book. Uh, most definitely on Instagram, you can find me at darkness underscore the number two underscore hope. Um, on Facebook is darkness to hope LLC. And you can purchase the book on my website. Um, I have limited signed copies for on my website. And that's www.from darkness, the number two hope.com. And if you does, if you don't want a signed copy, you can order it from Amazon. Um, it's Breaking the Silence, Christianity and Mental Illness by Dorcas P. 
Right. But, fam, get the signed copy, family. The <laughs> signed copy. Go through the website, get the sign. You get the personalized signed copy of her book. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so definitely go ahead and support the sister family. Um, listen, she will be back. Would you like to come back through the show for another episode? Oh, oh most definitely. Okay. Oh, yeah, she and will be back say, on future episodes. Go ahead, you saying something? Yes, I just want to say, you know, whoever's listening, you got this. You got this. It's going to be hard, but you got this. You are not in this alone. And God is just waiting for you to step out of your comfort zone. And so he can take over. He's already laid the, the path. He just waiting for you to jump on the path with him. All right. Thank you. You heard it. You heard it here first. Let me give him my social media before we bounce. Of course, um, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at the Phoenix 516. That's T H E P H O E N I X 516 on both Instagram and Twitter. You can find me on my website, reverbnation.com uh, slash Brian B R I A N. Middle initial T, last name Bethia, B E T H E A. You can find me on Facebook at Confessions with Brian T. Bethia on Facebook. And of course, you can also find me on Facebook, my other page, Brian T. Bethia Confessions on Facebook as well. Uh, family. Also, become a subscriber to my YouTube channel there. Got it? Become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. Find me on YouTube at just Brian Bethia. That's it. Brian B R I A N. Last name, Bethea, B-E-T-H-E-A. Definitely, I have episodes and, uh, of course, my poetry up there and whatnot. And, of course, family. And, um, listen, we would love to advertise your business. So, definitely, if you want your business advertised on my podcast, we can hook that up for you. You know what I'm saying? So, you can definitely reach out to me, uh, of course, or the station. And uh, we will make sure that we can, how we can, you know, better assist you and whatnot. And we can, and you can assist me as well, family. You know what I'm saying? So, definitely. Stay tuned uh, for next week. You know, saying same time, same place, dear family. WJHM 102Jams.com. Don't forget to download the app exactly how I just said it. WJHM 102Jams.com on your Android or Apple device, family. You know what I'm saying? So you can listen to my show constantly. All right, we'll be right back next week. See y'all next week, fam, with Confessions with Brian T. Bethia. All right, peace. Are you frustrated with your computer? Tired of waiting for the computer to let you get your work?